fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find the greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hi! The Lone Ranger and Toto had ridden hard to reach San Pedro, the main community in San Pedro County. It was after dark when they drew rein in the shelter of trees a hundred yards behind the sheriff's office. They left their horses at ground hitch and moved on foot toward the lighted building. We're in luck, Toto. Sheriff Dawson is still in his office. Ah. We see two men through window. Yes, and they're both wearing a badge. One must be the deputy. Kimasabi. Yes. You think Sheriff Dawson in pay of Folsom gang? The Padre said Folsom controls San Pedro County. I want to learn what Sheriff Dawson has to say about that. But I'm going into that office and stir things up. And me go? No. You wait in the darkness beneath that open window so you can hear what's said after I leave. I'll wait for you in the trees where we left the horses. Me savvy. All right. Get over at that window. I'll go through the back door. Hey, who's it? Sheriff, I want to talk to you. Max. You too, deputy. A crook. Hold it. Why, uh... Finish that draw, and we'll have some gunplay. All right, you get the drop on us. Draw your gun slowly and drop it to the floor. You too, deputy. Quickly. You're trying to make trouble for yourself. You've come to the right place. Drop the guns. I'll uh, kick them this way. Thanks. I'll drop them outside when I leave. Well, mister, I don't want any trouble. I didn't ask what you want, Sheriff. I came here to talk about Jim Folsom. Jim Folsom? Is he a friend of yours? No. He's a crook, a thief, and a killer. He's wanted by the law in the next county. Sheriff Dodsworth wants him. You know Sheriff Dodsworth, don't you, Dawson? Who are you to ask me questions? Didn't Dodsworth come here to see you? Didn't he want your help in putting Folsom in jail? Well... And didn't you turn him down? I keep order in San Pedro. Let other lawmen do the same in their own community. Folsom leads a gang of crooks that operate all over this part of the state. They make San Pedro their headquarters because they're safe here. Safe to go out and commit crimes to add to their wealth and power. Left alone, they become more powerful than the law. They'll take over the entire territory. I can't help them. Yes, you can. If you hated crooks as a good lawman should, you'd make San Pedro too hot for them. You'd jail them for vagrancy when they had no visible means of support. 
You'd crack down on them for gambling. You'd cooperate with the lawmen in other counties. Ah, yes. There are many ways to put crooks out of business if you want to. As a last resort, you could send for Texas Rangers. Yeah, she did. Both of them and the other crooks find sanctuary here because you let them. Any time there's a crime committed in San Pedro, I'll get the credit you committed it. And they'll pay in full. Aside from that... I'm going to find out if you mean that. You're going to find out? I'll leave your guns outside. You'd better keep this door closed for a minute or so after I leave. If you open it or appear at the back window... I might think you're trying to get me and start shooting. Boy, that only fast... Shut up, deputy. Telling us to keep the door closed. I'll take this rifle and let that critter know he's tangling with the law. Hey! Hey, he drew my head. He warned you. Now leave the door closed, as he said. He was backing toward the trees over yonder. Yes, he sure called it. Yeah, but the way he talked and took our guns and shut my head. Oh, hang it all, deputy. We know he gave us the two facts... Wilson is head of a gang of crooks. But what can we do about it? I don't even know all the members of his gang. If I try to move against Folsom, some of the gang will get me. But Folsom gave his word there'd be no crimes in San Pedro as long as he ran things. That's another point. If Folsom and some of his pals went to jail, the rest would break loose in San Pedro and there'd be more trouble than anyone could handle. If his whole gang could be captured at one time... There's no and... chance of that, Besides, Fulsom has spent a lot of money doing favors for people around here. Yeah, he's well liked. There's no question about that. It'd be hard to find a jury to sit on a case against him. Well, Deputy, I'm hoping the masked man goes for Jim Fulsom. And I hope he gets it. Toto listened at the rear window for some time, then moved silently away in the darkness to join the Lone Ranger and tell what he had heard. So that's why Sheriff Dawson doesn't dare move against Folsom without an airtight case. And he can't get an airtight case. Folsom not break law in San Pedro. I know while I was waiting for you, I thought over several plans. Uh-huh. We're going to try one of them. And what you do? I'm going to play the part of an outlaw. The mask will help. That's right. You're going to pose as my enemy. And what we do? When the padre told me about the situation here in San Pedro... He gave me the names of several leading citizens on whom I might call for help. Uh-huh. I have a letter signed by the Padre, introducing me to the banker, the storekeeper, and the express office manager. You call on them? I'll call on all three tonight. At midnight, we'll make the fourth call. And where we go then? We'll call on Big Jim Fulsom. We'll probably find him in the cafe. Keeping out of sight of everyone who might be in the town's main street, the Lone Ranger made three calls. He showed the Padre's letter to the banker, the express office manager, and the storekeeper. Then he rejoined Toto. Now, Toto, we're ready for the fourth call. Me look in cafe. Jim Folsom there right now. And that's where we're going. Remember the part you're to play? Jim Folsom sat at a corner table in the cafe with a shifty-eyed man whose description was on reward notices in several counties. Butch, you did all right with that hold-up in Pine Flats. Thanks, Folsom. Yeah, you handled that job first rate. You turn all the cash over to me? Oh, I wouldn't try to hold out on your boss. All right. You stay here in San Pedro for the time being. You won't be bothered by the law here. What's the next job? Newton is over in Wheatonville sizing up the bank. <laughs> Might need cleaning out. Meanwhile, I'm working on some other plans. I'll let you know when I'm ready. You sure plan carefully. Yeah, that's why the men who work for me stay out of jail. And as long as they know who's boss, they stay healthy and prosperous. Got him up. Oh. The boss, the mask man. The first man to go for a gun gets hurt. I'll get him. No. I said the first man who went for a gun would get hurt. That goes for the second and third man also. Now, who'll be next? Boss, who is that? I don't know, Butch. Not one of my men. All of you line up facing that wall. Listen to me, Butch. As we move to the wall, you get your gun out. I'll try to cover the move. Yes, Sandy, Mr. Fulsom. You there. Enter the cash box into this flower sack. All right, all right. I'm a doing it. You too. Get over at the wall with the others. Step lively. All right, we're moving, we're moving. I turn fast and throw a shot into him, Butch. Here goes. Oh, oh. Butch moved fast. As he turned and fired, but the masked man was even faster. His gun spoke a split second ahead of the outlaws. The bullet hit Butch in the shoulder with force that spun him off his feet. I'll accommodate anyone else who wants gunplay. Oh, my shoulder? 
Oh, hurry with that cash. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm getting it. The Lone Ranger, standing near the door, kept everyone covered with guns that had already spoken with amazing accuracy. Most of the men faced the wall with their hands up as ordered. But Butch, who lay groaning on the floor, and Fulton, who half turned his head, saw Tonto appear at an open window near the door. They saw the Indian come through the window soundlessly and approach the masked man from the rear. No one suspected that Tonto's moves were part of the Lone Ranger's carefully worked out plan. Then Tonto leaped. Me get him! No, you don't! See? Tonto had leaped on the masked man's back, but the Lone Ranger jerked free. His gun barked. <laughs> Several lamps were smashed, and in the confusion that followed, the masked man leaped through the door. Tonto was staggering. It didn't seem intentional that he momentarily blocked the way for men who had whipped out their guns. By the time the men got outside, the masked man and his waiting horse were gone into the night. Several of the men from the cafe had taken off in pursuit of the Lone Ranger. But Jim Fulsom remained in the cafe to talk to Tonto. Why didn't you shoot that masked man instead of trying to jump him? Me want him alive. Me owe plenty to masked man. I oh, wanted to torture him, huh, Isn't that right? Me catch masked man someday. I'm downright obliged to you. You saved my money. He saved all of our money. That masked man is poisoned fast with a gun, but I'll get square with him someday for shooting me. I know how the engine feels. I'd like to get him alive. Me follow masked man long time. And someday... Me catch him. You can follow his trail, huh? Ah. Good. I'll see that you get lots of help, Injun. From now on, you're working for me, Jim Folsom. It was late at night, but a light still burned in Sheriff Dawson's home. The lawman paced the floor, and there was a dark scowl on his face. When he heard a rap on the door, he turned quickly and muttered, You've been sad, Wendy's. Is that another robbery being reported? Well, what the masked man's... Good evening, Sheriff. Hey, you, you are the masked man. Steady. You know better than to go for a gun. What do you, what do you I'll want? I'll step inside. I waited until most people were in bed, but I can't take a chance on some night owl seeing me in your doorway. What are you up to? The banker, the storekeeper, the express agent? They've all been here to say you called on them. I thought you might be getting reports. Did you hear from the cafe? Eh, not directly, but one of the boys said you were there, too. Nearly got caught because of a redskin. Well, you're not going to get away, mister. Did the banker or either of the others say I robbed them? No, but... Uh, what did they say? Well, it, it, I'd be hearing from you. I told them I'd call on you. Now, if you'll sit down and relax, I'll put my gun away. We can talk better. Talk! Wholesome <laughs> and all of his men should be jailed. There's a flat chance. Sheriff Dodsworth would jail them if you could catch them in his county. They're too smart to get caught there. You can help by running known crooks out of San Pedro County. What do you suppose would happen to me if I got rough with any of Fulsom's men? I'll tell you. The rest of the gang would get me. You might make sure none of the gang was left to get you. What are you hitting at? Sheriff Dawson and I called on three of the most prominent townsmen tonight. Showed them a letter from the Padre. Because of that letter, they trusted me. I'll show it to you. If you trust me, you'll listen to me. We may be able to put the whole Folsom gang out of business. Uh, here's the letter. Uh, why didn't you talk this way when you came to my office instead of coming at me like you did? Yesterday, I didn't know that you actually wanted to smash the crooks. Now, uh, please read the letter. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. Sheriff Dawson read the letter the Lone Ranger had shown the townsman that night. He paused frequently to glance up at the tall masked man who waited patiently and quietly. When he had finished, the lawman rose from his chair and offered his hand as a gesture of cooperation. The following morning, Jim Folsom was in his house with two of his men and Toto when Sheriff Dawson entered. I want to see you, Folsom. Well, speak fast, Sheriff. I'm busy. You said things would stay peaceful in my county. Well, what about it? Well, last night, things weren't so peaceful. If you're talking about that masked man who came to the cafe... That's can... not the only place he went. Before he went to the cafe, the masked man went to the bank, the Wells Fargo office, and the general store. The banker and the others served notice that something has to be done, and fast. If I don't get that masked man... And insist I call for United States Marshals of the Texas Rangers. If you think that masked man's working for me, you can... Now listen, Sheriff, I'm more anxious to get him than you are. I'll see that he's found. How are you going to find him? Leave that to me. And take my word for it, you won't need to call in any Marshals or Rangers. Now get out of here and let me get to work here. All right, Wilson. But remember what I told you. I'll remember. Now then, Injun... Last night you said you'd work for me. Me follow Mass Man's trail. Yeah? Well, that's what I want. The boys who rode after him last night came back empty-handed. Engine, you said you could follow his trail in daylight. Well, maybe me get him. Maybe not. What do you mean by that? You're going to start back him down? Mass feller got plenty friends. Gang, huh? How do you know? Well, me see plenty on Mass Man's trail. Sometime me get plenty close. But find Mask Man with friends. Well, we can get help, can't we, boss? Can you ride and shoot with that bandage shoulder? Sure thing. I can shoot with my left hand. Well, Stacy's here in town. So is Limpy. You and Joe here make four, and I'll ride with you. That's five. Uh, Mask Man got more than five friends. How many? Me not know. Well, about how many? Six, seven, nine, ten? Maybe ten. Maybe twelve. Well, in that case, I'll have to get all my boys together. Well, you said Newton was away studying the bank. Well, I'll send Limpy over to get him. You want me to get all the men who are in town? Yeah, and get them all together. And, uh, Butch, you tell Limpy to go to Wheatonville and be back with Newton by noon. Right. We'll start out by noon. We'll have men enough to put that masked man and his whole gang out of business. Sure will. We have a safe place here in San Pedro as long as there's no crime. That masked man stirred up a hornet's nest last night. And it's up to us to find him and put him out of the way. Wilson's men were assembled and ready to start out at noon. Meanwhile, Toto had picked up the Lone Ranger's tracks at the edge of town. The in- Wilson's men were assembled and ready to start out at noon. Meanwhile, Toto had picked up the Lone Ranger's tracks at the edge of town. The Indian led the way, followed by Jim Folsom and 11 ruthless killers who were heavily armed and equipped with supplies for a long trail. The trail was straight across the plains. Then it wound through mountains. At sunset, Toto pointed to a place where the solitary rider had been joined by several other horsemen. Darkness overtook Folsom's men and their Indian guide. They camped for the night and set out again at daybreak. The tracks were clear throughout the morning. At noon, the outlaws camped briefly for a meal. Mid-afternoon found them in desolate, unfamiliar country. Boss, we're a long way from San Pedro. Yeah, but we're closer to that masked man and his pals. That's what counts. You sure of that? Yeah. The Indian pointed out a little while ago how the tracks were sharper and newer. Get up, get up, get up. One hour later found Toto leading the way through hilly country. He was some distance ahead of Fulsom and the other crooks. Presently he halted, dismounted, and studied the tracks that led through a narrow pass. He looked to the east beyond the pass, then leaped to the saddle and rode back to meet the gang. Fulsom saw Toto and stopped his men. Rain, boys. Looks like the Indian has news. Fulsom, over there. Hey, what's up, Engine? I mean, got good news. Masked man and gang camped up ahead. How do you know? And up yonder, tracks make turn to right. Big cave near there. A cave? Yeah. Me see cave. See nine horses tied outside. Including the white one the masked man rode? Yeah. White horse there, too. Good for you, engine. You've done a fine job. 
All right, just my boys. You're not tell me, Injun, just what the situation looks like. A trail go through past. Tuttle described the rock-studded valley beyond the pass and told Fulsom about a cave not far to the east. He described the nine horses that were at ground hitch near the cave and the huge boulders nearby. However, he did not mention the fact that the Lone Ranger was behind one rock with Dawson, the San Pedro Sheriff, as well as Sheriff Dodsworth. The masked man was speaking. Fulsom's gang will be here in a few minutes. You saw Tonto's signal? Yes. My men will take the cue from me. Uh, how about the men you brought, Sheriff Dodsworth? They're just waiting for the word to go. If we start gunplay, they'll follow suit. If the cooks surrender and we close in to make a rest, they'll be with us. They watch me from the rocks to shelter them. Good. Sheriff Dawson, I'm downright grateful for this help. When I asked you for help before, you gave me such a turn down, I thought you were in cahoots with the fulsome outfit. I'll tell you more about that later, Dodgewood. Fact is, when you came to my place early this morning and told me about this trap, I thought it was a trick of some sort. I'd still think so if I could figure any way you'd profit by leading me into a trap. Or why the Folsom gang would want me out of the way. Better save the talk for later. Tonto will come into view any second. I'm ready. Tonto knows the play we got in mind. Yes. You bring the crooks into view near the cave. And we can cover them from behind these rocks. And if they resist, which same I hope they do, we'll start the gunplay. They sure hope there's no slipper. <laughs> Norman waited tensely. Tonto talked to Fulsom and saw a deep scowl on the face of the leader. We leave horses here. Go on foot through pass. Me show you how to get You've to... done a fine job bringing us here. But from now on, I'll take the lead. Me show how to get close to cave. Wait near entrance. And get shot by the masked man and his friends inside the cave. Is that it? No one in cave see you. Be sure of that. Your idea is to wait near the cave. Then what? And get fellas when they come out. How long would we have to wait? Me not know. Yeah, it might be hours. I don't hanker to wait. Let's rush the cave and blast now, the place. shut up. I'll do the planning. Me show you Engine, how... I said I'd do the planning. Come on, men. We'll get to the pass. All right. What's your plan, boss? The engine said there were nine horses. That means nine men. And before we enter the valley, we'll open fire on the horses. No. What's the matter with you, Engine? You will not shoot horses. Why not? When we blaze away, the men in the cave will see their horses dropping. Now, come on fast. We can drill them. That's not good. It is good. It's a slick idea. There's only one thing. What if all nine of the men don't come out of the cave? I need to stay behind. It'd be hard to get. Any we don't get will be left without a horse. They can't travel far on foot. I'll offer them the chance to come out and maybe join my outfit. To stay in the cave and starve. All right, no more talk now. We're getting close to the pass. Tonto knew that the Lone Ranger's plan depended on getting the Fulsom gang to approach the mouth of the cave. He hadn't counted on Fulsom's veto of the suggestion. He knew that the outlaw's opening volley of gunfire would take the lives of several horses including the Lone Ranger's mighty stallion, the great horse Silver. Toto felt that he had let the masked man down. He didn't consider the fact that he had done his best, the fact that he could not be blamed. Just one fact assailed his brain. His mission was a failure. He was silent as he walked beside Fulsom at the head of the group of outlaws to the end of the pass. All right, stop here, boys. Toto watched the outlaws creep forward with their rifles ready. All of you get set. When I give the word, open fire on those horses. I'll take the white one. Tonto saw the mighty Silver standing a hundred yards away, wholly unaware of the weapons that would presently send bullets through his proud head and gallant heart. Tonto heard the rifles being cocked. I'm set. Me too. Life suddenly became unimportant to Tonto. Throwing caution to the winds, he cried out wildly as he leaped. Hey! Hey! He threw himself on Fulton's rifle and forced the barrel down. Hey, you loco fool, get out of the way! The outlaws were surprised and off balance. For an instant, they didn't know what to make of Tonto's attack. Tonto, meanwhile, grabbed Fulsom in his strong arm. Pull him off. Get him off me. Come on, men. Look over there. The masked man, he's gang. They weren't in the cave. The engine tricked us. Get the redskin. Get the double-crossing redskin. Hey, there's Sam. And deputy. Let him have it. Come on, Come on. Come on. Led by the Lone Ranger, the sheriffs and the deputies advanced from rock to rock, returning the outlaw's fire. Tonto clutched Fulsom in a grip of steel and hung on despite Fulsom's struggles. No one dared fire at the Indian for fear of hitting the leader. One man raised his gun as a club, was about to crash on Tonto's head, when a silver bullet from the Lone Ranger's gun smashed the hand that held it. Outlaw after outlaw dropped before the deadly shooting of the lawman. Several deputies went down as well. Tonto fought to exhaustion, but finally dropped under the rain of blows. By that time, the fight was nearly over. Fulsom turned and tried to run. 
He went down with a bullet in the leg. The surviving outlaws threw down their guns. The wounded men were cared for and the prisoners were tied. Tato regained consciousness after his many bruises and one bullet wound were treated by the Lone Ranger. The Indian grinned gamely at his tall masked friend. You'll be all right, Tato. But it's a miracle you weren't killed. Silver all right? Yes. One of the sheriff's men just brought him here with the other horses. Scout's also been brought up. Help me right now. Good for you, Toto. Oh, see here, Sheriff Dawson. You can't arrest us. You've got no charges. No, oh, but Sheriff Dawson was his. All going right. There's plenty against you and your man, Fulsom. Save your breath, Dodsworth. This isn't your territory. That's where you're wrong. Tonto led you crooks in such a roundabout way, you didn't know where you were. You crossed into my county about five miles from here. Boy, that double-crossing Indian. Yeah, look at him. He's leaving with the masked man. He said he wanted to get the masked man. Boy, that... Yep, his job's done. So's the masked man. <laughs> Fooled you, Fulsom. Fooled you and helped the law get your whole doggone gang Hey, Sheriff Dawson, yes? about that mass man. Uh, I took him on your say-so, but just who is he? I'll tell you, Dodgeworth. He's the man who showed me how to trap the whole Fulsome gang. He's the Lone Ranger. a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 